Don't you just wish that sometimes spirit would tell you what the F to do? I know I've been there. We want a play by play of what is supposed to happen. But our spirit messages are not always clear. And that's what I'm talking about today on this episode of the Spiritual and Ambitious Podcast, all about why your spirit messages are not always clear. So stay tuned. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guide. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. Before we get started today, I wanted to make sure you knew about the free spirit guide masterclass. We are a little less than a week away from Halloween and Halloween is said to be when the veil is thin to talk to spirit. I don't necessarily agree with that. I feel like you can talk to spirit all the time. And I also feel like right now the earth is shifting and there's so many different changes that it's actually easier to communicate with spirit right now, but it's up to us to raise our vibration. So if you want to learn the steps and process that I use to talk to spirit, go to messengerspirit.com forward slash class or check the link in the show notes. So I'm going to start this out with pulling some cards from the Messenger of Spirit Oracle. And the first card is a card of clarity. Isn't that funny? Because our topic today is why aren't spirit messages always clear? But prepare to make a decision. Clarity is right around the corner. That's what I love about this. It's like, hey, clarity doesn't happen all the time, but it certainly does happen. And it's right around the corner. And it's like the journey that we need to embrace. And then we get the clarity as the outcome. The next card is the card of the chemist. So if you're inside of four intuitive languages or intuition abundance Academy, you know about this spirit guide for you. Your chemist adjusts your etheric body to help you become more clear. So let's talk about that today. So why are messages not clear all the time? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, did you actually get the message or were you thinking? Clearing the mind is the most important step in spirit communication, period. If your mind is not clear, you are going to be making messages up and you're going to be dragging the messages your spirit guides give you down through your emotional body, your mental body. You're going to be thinking about things and you're not going to get a clear message. That's one reason why your messages are not clear because you may be thinking or not have a clear mind while you're receiving. So I always tell my students, please do not talk to your spirit guides in the grocery store as you are getting stuff off your list, because what will happen is you will wonder if it is really from spirit or not, because your mind cannot be clear as you are thinking. So make sure that you clear your mind. Now, the next thing I'll say to you is it might not be clear because maybe you've not developed your intuitive language. So there are four intuitive languages, the seer, the owl, the empath, and the channeler. And guess what? Your language has changed. So maybe you're expecting it to come in a certain way when really it did come in super clear, it just came in a different intuitive language and you're not used to the change. So developing your intuition and heightening your sensitivity is going to be really, really important, which goes back to the chemist. When I work with my students inside of my program, I talk about the chemist and during an exercise, you're going to ask the chemist to come in and adjust your etheric body. Your etheric body attaches your aura to your physical body. When you pass on into spirit, you drop the body and you drop the etheric body because all you'll need is the mental and emotional and spiritual bodies. The etheric body is like a cellophane wrapping around us that has sensitivity receptors. So have you developed your intuition in order to heighten and increase your sensitivity? And one way is to work with a chemist and ask the spirit guide to help us increase our sensitivity 
But also raising our vibration is going to be really important for help with this. That means eating foods that are lighter that don't weigh you down watching TV shows that are lighter and not giving you nightmares, or maybe just saying no to electronics and no TV. Music, what music are you listening to? Is it heavy? Basically, it can be anything in your life, whether it's food, TV, music, people, relationships, jobs, locations. The point is, is it in resonance? Is it helping you become lighter? Do you feel like a better person, a lighter person, a happier person, a joyful person, or do you feel heavy? And sometimes you can say, well, chocolate and wine makes me feel happy. It might soothe a pain and cover it up, but most of the time, it's not going to make you feel like a lighter person. A lot of times it is going to make you feel like a heavier person. Now, I'm not saying to not have wine and not have chocolate. I'm talking about In general, your choices, are they covering things up that you're kind of hiding the pain, so to speak? Or are you really living in alignment with what you like? Sometimes we feel like we have to stay in a friendship or a relationship because it's too painful to get out of when really it's just bogging our vibration down and we know it's time for a change. So really look at, is your mind clear? Is the message coming through a different intuitive language? Have I actually developed all of my intuitive languages? And am I sensitive enough to spirit communication? Then that's really important. And you want to take that free class if you want to learn more about that. The next thing I'm going to say to you too is, are you relying on symbols or signs too much? And this is a big one. I will hear people say, I didn't get a sign, so I didn't do it. Or I saw a sign and I did it, but then it turned out not to be the right situation. And that means people are not connected to their intuition. So if you're relying on signs and you solely make a decision based on a sign told you to go do it and you got there and it really, really was not the right decision, then it's teaching you something still. You're still learning from it. And what are you learning? You're learning to trust yourself. You're learning that hmm, just because a sign came in, I didn't really feel it through my intuitive language or see or hear, or I didn't know it. I didn't feel inspired to do it. Relying on your intuition is the most important thing that you can possibly do when it comes to making decisions. And really, it's interesting because... When you're trusting your intuition, yes, you're trusting your spirit guides, but ultimately you are loving yourself, having more confidence in yourself and trusting yourself. Sometimes we just think things are a sign and they are not a sign. I think signs are great, but you've got to back it up with your intuition. So I'm always going to ask, what is for my highest and my best? Can you show me the energy around this decision if I do this? And I will make sure to pay attention to how I am feeling, or maybe there's a knowing, or maybe I'm hearing a yes or no, or I'm seeing a yes or no. And then I might say, and could you validate this with a sign? So let's not rely on signs. Wait, it's just, no, let's not do it. Let's not rely on signs, period. Let's use them as validations and synchronicities and whoa, wasn't that so cool versus asking our guides to leave these breadcrumbs for every single thing in our life. Because honestly, if you rely on signs too much, your spirit guides are going to be like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to communicate with you this way. Same goes for pendulums or Oracle cards. You know that I love my Oracle card deck, but if you overuse it, your guides are going to work with you through it. So it's going to be really important that you not rely too much on it. All right. So when we come back from this quick break, we will talk more about the different things that are going on and why messages are not always clear. This episode is sponsored by my free Spirit Guide Masterclass. Inside, you'll learn the five C's of Spirit Guide communication, your role with your Spirit Guides, two proven effective strategies to stop second guessing yourself and your intuition and the single most important step to understand your intuitive guidance, along with four ways to perceive your spiritual intuitive messages. 
You'll also be getting a workbook to go through this class as well. You can join at messengerspirit.com forward slash free class. This episode is brought to you by L'Oreal Paris Skincare. Get brighter, more hydrated skin with L'Oreal Paris 12% Pure Vitamin C and Hyaluronic Acid Plumping Serum. Vitamin C makes skin look up to 70% brighter and makes pores less visible by 59%, while Hyaluronic Acid leaves your skin plumper, more hydrated, and visibly reduces wrinkles. Use this skin layering duo every morning and night for best results. Learn more at L'OrealParisUSA.com. Welcome back. We're talking about why your spirit messages are not always clear. And we've covered some of the basis of, you know, did you even get the message? Because your mind might not be clear. Have you developed your intuition? Have you learned the different intuitive languages and increased your sensitivity? Or are you relying on signs way too much? Next thing, are you second guessing yourself? This is a big one. So what happens is we get a message and then we will immediately second guess ourselves which then that clarity that we just received goes out the window because we made it unclear because we are getting in our own way. That's going to be really important. Are we getting in our own way? That's really what it is. Are you receiving the message, but your logic can't figure out how it's going to work? That's a big deal. That's a problem. That is normally a common thing that does happen. And what you have to do is start taking inspired action. Give yourself less lead time. So when you get a message, act on it immediately or as fast as you can. If you allow yourself wiggle room, you will think yourself out of the message. So if I'm going to give myself a couple days to think something over when I already know what the outcome is and I can get it clearly... I then muddy the water and also kind of muddy up any manifestation from it. So when you get that clear, hell yeah, or hell no, leave it there and do the thing, whatever is there. Now, I understand that you might say, well, Whitney, I can't even give the hell no's and the hell yeses. Well, then go through some of these other things. Did you get the message? Have you developed your intuition Maybe it's time for a change. A lot of times people say, well, I developed my intuition. You know, I took your class two years ago. That's great. Your vibrations changed. Go through the class again because you get lifetime access to the recording once you're in it. And then you can develop your intuition and continue to move through. And better yet, if you are a student of mine, join my mentorship program, which is aligned. It's an ongoing program where you raise your vibration. So really make sure that you're doing the inner work and are you relying on the signs too much and are you getting in your own way, which is a big one. Now, here's another reason why messages are not always clear. Some opportunities are ready for us and some opportunities are not. So we have moments of clarity in our lives where we feel like I've done the self-care, I've done my meditating, I talked to my spirit guides and you know, I felt like this break in the clouds. I got this clear message. And then what happens is if you're continuing to make decisions out of alignment, doing things that weigh your energy down, the clouds come back. Then our vibration hasn't really changed. We start overthinking like we had just talked about. And then our opportunities can shift and change. We start giving out vibes of this isn't for us No, I don't think that's going to be it. I don't think it's going to work out. Here's all the reasons why it can't work out. And so our spirit guides go, "Eh, well, I thought you were really going to do this, but now that you're not doing this, we got to change some things around here. It muddies the water. It's like adding dirt to your bath water. So what I'd like for you to do instead, when you get that moment of clarity, like the peak in the clouds and the sun shines through, I want you to get excited about it and even think about all the reasons why this is your clear message and follow the freaking thing instead of sitting there and waiting on it, right? So it kind of goes hand in hand, but honestly, our spirit guides give us messages. If we don't act on them fast enough, they go, oh, you're really not ready. Okay. We're going to change course here. We're going to change the opportunity 
And now it's going to feel a little murkier because that opportunity has shifted and changed. I like to call it missing your window of time. Doesn't mean that another window is not going to open up. It will open up, I promise. It's just that window of opportunity has closed or that ship has sailed. And so when we tap into it, that's what can happen. Now, another thing that's very similar in this reasoning is that if your opportunity or your message involves other people, other people can change. They can make different decisions too. So sometimes your opportunities change because of that. So one of the messages that people will get sometimes are about relationships and romance. They'll say, oh, great. I know I'm going to meet my partner in you know X amount of months, whatever it is. And then something changes. And it's not necessarily always on the person who received the message, though you can do inner work and make sure you're following your signs. Sometimes it's the other person and they've made a different decision, especially if the other person is not as intuitively awake and open as you are. Now, another reason why your spirit messages are not always clear is because of your own energy. Like I just said, a lot of it depends on us. We have to be ready to receive it. So we often ask questions that we're truly not ready to receive the answer for or that we're not privy to know the answer for. Sometimes we think that we should be getting messages all the freaking time and spirit will tell us to do this and that. We are not puppets. We have to make decisions for ourselves. So especially if you have the intuitive language of the channeler, which is, this clear knowing in your body, right? You just know the message or you get an inspiration for the message. If that is your language, then oftentimes you have to just experience it by making a decision and listen to your body. And when you experience it, you learn, oh, don't like this or, oh, I do like this. Now, if you're the channeler, you will normally feel an inspiration like, oh my gosh, I feel inspired to go do this. Or your body just reacts and all of a sudden you're signing yourself up for a class or you're saying something and you're like, where'd that come from? But if you feel stuck, sometimes it is your spirit guide saying, make a decision and you need to experience it. If you are an empath and you feel like, I got nothing. Well, make sure your own energy is clear. You've got to clear your chakras, clear your own energy so that you can really tune into what it is that you need to feel, especially when it comes to decision time, because you've picked up other energies from other people, or you can be influenced by people you live with or the person that you were with four hours earlier. Make sure that your energy is clear in order to receive that message. And if you are an owl, you want to listen to the message and make sure your mind is clear because owls will fight with their own voice of saying no or yes. And so allow yourself to just be in quiet. When you can be in quiet for a little while, speak out loud. Is this for my highest and best? And then once you speak out loud, see what you get from that. You want to hear yourself. If you're a seer, Allow yourself to take some downtime where you can just be in a dark room, allow yourself to just relax and then ask for those messages to come through and you can see a yes or a no or a green light or a red light. It may take some time if your eyes are overstimulated. It may take some time if your ears are overstimulated. So these are different ways to help you through making a decision when you feel like it's not clear. But it boils down to you need to clear your energy regardless. You need to do an energy healing session, clear out your chakras, have some alone time, and truly just be calm. Most of the time we're anxious about something we want to know an answer to. And so we can't get the answer because we're attached to the outcome. We want it to be a certain one or we're not truly ready for it. And so we need to clear out our energy and just receive what it is. Do you know how many times I've received the message of patience? I'm so sick of it. Like, no, thank you. Right. Which probably means I haven't gotten the the lesson, but you just need to accept what it is. 
And I have actually accepted a lot of the patients and really grounded into the calm. And my ego sometimes says, but this doesn't make any logical sense. You know, how is this going to work? And this going to work. And the more you let that intuitive feeling and that intuitive sense take over and feel that calm, then you also feel that calm. So understanding that we've got to clear our own energy too. And in some areas of our life, we are super clear about things and that light bulb moment hits. And in other areas of our life, we have to process some energy. We need to process it through our mental, our emotional, and all of our bodies before we get to that clarity. And that's part of the patience. It's part of the rest. And that's why it is that way. Other areas, spirit wants us to learn certain lessons too. And like I said, we're not privy to every single thing. Some messages are not ready for us at the moment. But most of the time, if you're complaining to me about why your messages aren't clear, I'm going to go back to the top three. Did you clear your mind? Have you developed your intuition? And are you currently and consistently working on developing your chemistry as it becomes more sensitive to spirit? All right. I hope to see you inside of my free spirit guide class. The link is in the show notes and I will be back with a brand new mini episode, our last Sunday mini episode. I give you spirit messages for the week on the 29th. So until then, thanks here's so the much for listening to this ambitions. episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerspirit.com. And you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at messenger of spirit. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to stand spiritual and ambitious. This podcast is part of the sound advice FM network. Sound advice FM. Women's Voices Amplified.